In judo, when you fight, you must psych yourself up. Some people do it because of the love of the sport. For me, it's also, yes, the love of the sport, but it's the love to win. I want to win. Uh, I want to achieve my goal, no matter who and what, even if I have to fight dirty. in a lot of things to make money. Uh, smuggle, which is illegal diamond buying, I did that. Um, broke people's legs and arms, that's all part of the, of the work for the day. Making the money. Good morning, Mark. You can buy anything you like, you can do what you like, and if you if it happens that you uh, fall into a hole, money will pay to get yourself out of that hole. Oxygen, please. I'm just gonna take your blood pressure. You just relax, okay? Just move. How you doing, Mark? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just want you to relax, my angel. You just, you, it's gonna be fine, okay? Thank you. It's gonna be fine. Thank you very much. One, two, three. <laughs> at C2. He's lucky to be alive. Is he out of danger? I'm afraid not. Even if he survives, he'll never walk again. I will walk. 
will walk. When you went into the back of that bus, you broke your neck instantly, fracturing at C2. You're lucky to be alive. I'll walk. You're paralyzed from the neck down. The medical term is tetraplegic. You'll probably, you'll never walk again. God will take care of you. I don't need God. I'll walk myself. Here he comes. Hey, Mark. Wait. The doctor said this is a miracle. It's wonderful, Mark. It, it's, it's, it's wonderful. It's not a miracle. It's me. We're off. <clears throat> leave it. Come on, Mark. I said leave it. I can do this myself. <clears throat> if you need to do something, you call your brother, please, I need to go to the toilet. The simple things in life I can't do anymore. So now the animal, the untouchable, who always depends on himself, looking after himself, must look other people in the eye and say, please, help me. And that I couldn't accept. Why are you doing this? Because I love you. I'll never walk again. At least you're alive.
Okay. <laughs> Dad. Give me the gun. Give me the gun, Dad. feel I'm pulling the trigger, but the hammer didn't go forward. And I heard the voice saying, Mark, what are you doing? I thought it was my mom. And as I was turning my, my eyes around, I did not see the light in her room being on. And I couldn't see her in her room. So I thought that was strange because she's sleeping. How, who's speaking to me now? And I was pulling the trigger and someone physically was preventing me from pulling the trigger. And I heard again, Mark, what do you And the next moment, I felt a hand coming over my hand. And this hand pulled my hand away from the, my head. And then I realized there's someone in my room. But I, I, I did not see the person, but the voice was there. And him touching me was there. And I felt pins and needles. My hair was standing up like I've, I've seen a ghost. And my, I, I felt pins and needles over my whole body. But it was strange because I did not have feeling over my body. Only this part I had feeling. But how come the pins and needles over this part? How come I feel my hair standing up? And then I realized, well, this person is the Lord. I said to him, what must I do? He said, no, don't worry. Only time will tell. I said, what? Tell me, what must I do? He said, don't worry, Mark. Only time will tell. And the voice disappeared. And believe me, uh, I'm... I was not dreaming, I was not drunk, I was not under drugs. I'm speaking to you now the way I am and the Lord was, 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 was having the chat in the room. It was not definitely not the TV playing because it is, the TV was on, but the, the, the voice that spoke to me did not come from the TV. There was someone in my room and I felt the person's presence when the person spoke to me. That night I went to bed. I had one of the best night rests in years. I slept like a baby. Following morning I woke up. I said to my mom, please make appointments. I want to go to the fidget therapist now and whoever can help me to walk again. People in your condition don't usually live more than five years. You know, kidney failure, diabetes, there's a host of related ailments. Doctor, who are you to tell me whether I'm going to live or die? Or walk again? It's not your decision. There are very few recorded cases of C2 fractures that have lived, let alone walked again. It's medically... Impossible. <laughs> hey, Doc. Nothing is impossible. Fetch me my middle. this with gold.
when Mark actually came in the first day, he also had his um, judo medal around his neck. I th I'm sure that was the first day. And he said to me, well, this is who I am. I used to do judo. I was actually very good. And I had to believe him. And he said to me, well, and I'm going to do it again. And I, th this time I want gold. And you're going to help me. And you mark my words, I'm going to walk again. One day, I'm going to walk in here, pick you up with this right arm. I'm going to squeeze you. Mark, you are such a charmer. <laughs> OK, remember to just use your arm. Oh. Excellent. Well done. Oh. Well done. <laughs> Sitting in your wheelchair, by lying in your bed, and feeling sorry for yourself, it won't help you. By putting some input and belief and say, God, help me. The God, the Lord has got his ways to, to deal with matters and to solve problems. Why am I still here today? Medically, you can't explain it. I can't explain it. It's a medical. Doctor said, Mark, you would, you're lucky to be alive. So, who prevented my suicide if this person does not exist? Who took the gun away from my head if this person does not exist? I can explain it. It's very simple. It's very simple. It's not a doctor or a psychologist that was in my room taking the gun away from my head. It was not my mother. And it was definitely not my chimpanzee or my gorilla outside. It was the Lord. He took the, the gun away from my head.
He did it. And I promised you a hug a long time ago. <laughs> Why do we always have to accept the Lord if something happens to us, like my accident, or a family member passed away, or your wife gets murdered? Why only then do we run to the Lord? Why not beforehand? Then it's much easier to go through that pain with the Lord than without Him. God gave me not a, a, a first chance or a second chance. He gave me a lot of chances in life. I was too stupid and too full of myself to see these chances in life. I want to make all the wrongs which I did in life. I want to change that to make that right and say so just thank you Lord for giving another chance in life.